The American Revolution by Justin McKissick The French and Indian War The Seven Years' War began in May of 1754 when Virginia militia under the command of George Washington attacked a French patrol. The war was fought in and over the Ohio River Valley. The French and British had both begun trespassing upon each other's territory, thus increasing the tension between the two colonial powers. The war was fought between the British Army and its colonial militia against the French Army and their Native American allies. Several important battles and locations were Fort Duquesne, the base of French power located in the fork of the Ohio River, Fort Bijour, another French fort captured in 1755. This was the beginning of the British policy to deport captured French, both civilians and soldiers, to Louisiana. Fort William Henry. This was a British fort that was besieged by Native Americans under French allegiance. French with the Native American forces captured the fort and massacred all of its inhabitants. Montreal. This was the colonial capital of New France, and after its capture in September of 1760, and the French effectively ceased fighting with only sporadic outbreaks of conflict. The signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1763 ended the war officially. Post-French and Indian War Colonies Various acts were introduced after the French and Indian War to assist in refilling the British Treasury using mercantilist policies. The Stamp Act taxed paper and writing related goods. The Tea Act taxed tea. The Sugar Act taxed sugar, rum, and other sugary commodities. The Townshend Acts taxed basic commodities like lead, glass, and paint. The Intolerable Acts, a series of laws designed to punish the colonists for the Boston Tea Party. This included the Quartering Act and the closing of the Board of Boston. This collection of laws led to the American Revolution. The American Revolution. The war began in April of 1775 when British forces that had landed and taken over Boston marched to the towns of Lexington and Concord to seize an armory that was in the possession of the colonial militia. The following battle was a rout for the British who upon entering both towns were ambushed by militia, termed Minutemen. As they withdrew from the battles, they were repeatedly ambushed by Minutemen, resulting in heavy British casualties. The next significant battle was that of Bunker Hill. The Continental Army had a position outside of Boston, the Charlestown Peninsula. British General Howe besieged the detachment of Bunker Hill and suffered massive casualties taking it. The famous term, don't fire until you can see the whites of their eyes, was coined here. The next two significant battles were those of Brooklyn Heights and Trenton. The British General Howe besieged the city of New York in 1776 and Washington managed to withdraw his entire army of 20,000 in one night. In the Battle of Trenton, he returned by crossing Delaware under the cover of darkness and captured 1,000 Hessian mercenaries the British had hired. The last two significant battles were those of Saratoga and Yorktown. The Constitutional Army was victorious at Saratoga, effectively bringing the French into the war on the side of America. At the Battle of Yorktown, the Continental Army had besieged the town of Yorktown, while the French Navy destroyed the British fleet at the Battle of Chesapeake Bay. The British were left to fend for themselves in Yorktown, and subsequently surrendered. Lord Charles Cornwallis was the surrendering commander, while George Washington was the victorious commander. State Constitutions and the Articles of Confederation State Constitutions drafted after the Revolutionary War reflected two positions. One position, reflected by Pennsylvania's State Constitution, was that of complete democracy, making it a constitutional right for all white males to vote and run for office. Meanwhile, South Carolina's State Constitution reflected the opposite. 
It required that white males had to have such high property requirements that 90% of them could not run for office. Most of them could still vote, however. The Articles of Confederation was the federal government of the time and reflected the Pennsylvania state constitution more so than South Carolina's constitution. It gave equal power to the states and more power to the states than to itself. The Articles could not maintain an army, tax, or effectively conduct foreign relations because of the lack of control regarding the states. Lack in control, Shays' Rebellion, spawned by Congress's lack of taxation power, and festered because of its lack of ability to raise an army. The Constitution. The Constitution of the United States of America is its current and most effective governing document. It was born out of a necessity for an effective governing document. It was a compromise on many fronts, from slavery to legislative power. The Three-Fifths Compromise was a compromise between slave and free states over the representation of slaves. It dictated that slaves be counted as three-fifths of a person. The Great Compromise, or Connecticut Compromise, was a compromise between large and small states over whether population should be counted as the measure for the amount of legislative seats a state could have. There were the Virginia and New Jersey plans one calling for population, and one calling for equal representation. Eventually, a compromise was reached by creating two legislative bodies, the Senate and the House of Representatives, being equality and population-based, respectively. The last compromise was that of personal freedom. The Bill of Rights was composed of the first ten amendments to the Constitution and grants freedoms to both individuals and states.